Hello, it's me, Johanna, and I am back here today to do Business Management 5.7. I'm actually uploading this on the same day that I uploaded 5.6 because I forgot to upload yesterday, and I promised you guys I would upload one every day this week. So I'm going to try and catch up on that by uploading this one. This one's going to be really short anyway, so there's no issue there. So this is all about crisis management and contingency planning and it's HL only. So let's get right into it. So what is crisis management? So crisis management refers to the systematic steps and efforts by an organization to limit the damage from a sudden crisis. So how and what are these crises? So there are three different categories that you can look into. So there's human activity. This could be um, the financial crises that have happened. For instance, the one in 2008 that was like absolutely horrible. Uh, then there are industrial accidents. So for instance, uh, Chernobyl, which was a nuclear disaster that obviously um, there was a lot of radiation going on and stuff like that. So that was like an extreme, extreme crisis. I do not know how you would be able to plan for that, but anyway, we'll get to that later. Then there are natural disasters. This could be um, a typhoon, a tsunami, a tornado. Um, there are many more other natural disasters, maybe like really extreme forest fires, for instance. And obviously the ones I've been mentioning here are quite big. They are major crises. They and a lot of them were global scale, for instance, the financial crisis of 2008. However, there can be local scale crises or minor crises as well. So for instance, um, someone or a lot of your workers get really sick. Maybe it's just a cold, but they're still, you know, sick enough that they cannot work. And obviously that will cause issues for you. The IT system of the company may have failed and that will also create issues for you. So it doesn't necessarily have to be these giant things. So four factors that are crucial for crisis management are transparency. So stakeholders will want to know and be kept informed of what is happening. So you have to be honest and that should be part of your CSR, which is your corporate social responsibility. Don't try and make up something or pretend like nothing is going on. It is way better to be honest. Um, what follows that is that communication is important. And again, don't try to make like a PR stunt and like try to like hide what is actually going on. Think about the safety of the people involved rather than the reputation of the business. We are talking about endangering human lives or the environment or anything like that. You know, these crises could be super dangerous. Then there is speed, so you will have to act in a very quick way, which obviously means that a lot of your decisions might be rushed, which then again, sort of, we'll come back to that later about how it's important to have um, a crisis management team that has already thought of things so that the speed of your decisions won't make you, won't lead to you making a really bad choice for your business. So being prepared, essentially. Then there is control. Obviously, you need to try and to prevent further damage and keep the situation under control, whether this is controlling your employees or it could be something else, maybe controlling the machines, like shutting down all of the machines or something like that. But control is very important as well. So contingency planning. So basically these are the plans an organization makes uh, to basically put in place procedures when a crisis occurs. So you'll have a team who go and they sit and they think through the most common crises that could happen. Obviously, some things cannot be predicted. For instance, the world is going through a pandemic right now, and I'm sure that not every single business was like, wow, I'm going to make a plan for when we accidentally go into a pandemic. Did I even say a word right there? Pandemic. Um, yeah. So, but there are other things that are more likely. For instance, a fire may occur. Um, so there are four aspects you have to think about when making these plans. So cost. Obviously, having contingency plans is costly, both because you have to have employees who sit and plan this, like use time. 
but also you have to train your employees to be able to deal with these crises. But it is probably way less expensive than dealing with the crisis itself, not to mention the lawsuits that may occur. Because if you didn't have, let's say, a safety escape, then like, you are getting sued, okay, if anyone gets hurt in a fire. So, the second one is time. So I already mentioned this a bit, but it takes time for someone to be trained and it does take time to plan. So yes, contingency planning is time consuming. Then there are the risks. So you constantly have to assess the risks, the risk of the machines you're working, the risks to the company, the risk to maybe the community. The degree and level of risks are also likely to change, so you better check up that plan every now and then to see if the risks are the same as before or not. It is very important. The last one is safety. You need to focus on safety as a priority. You should not aim to better the reputation when talking about a crisis management plan because you are not averting the crisis. The crisis has already happened. You know what I mean? In this case, you have to prioritize the safety of the people. You know, you have to ensure that everyone gets out of the building if there is a fire, you know, and stuff like that. You have to make sure to make sure everybody is safe. That's why you have the plan to begin with. So the biggest advantage of having a crisis management team and doing contingency planning is that you have more time to make a decision. Well, I mean, not really. Um, what I mean by this is that if the crisis is a currently occurring, you are under a lot of stress and you have to be very urgent and you have to act really fastly. Fastly? Um, but if you had already made a plan beforehand for what to do if a fire occurs, what to do if a tsunami occurs, what to do if a tornado occurs, then at least you already have those plans. So if a similar crisis happens to those plans, you already know which actions to take, which means that your decisions are not going to be done while you are in a stressed mindset or while you have a stressed mindset, which could obviously make your thought process worse than usual. So it's always a good thing to do. So that was it for 5.7, the last chapter of the business management book. I will be going back, obviously, and doing the chapters that I skipped, so don't worry, more videos are coming. So feel free to subscribe, like, and comment. Follow me at Johanna Frenert or MasterChef Jojo or whatever other Instagram account I have at this point. Goodbye. I hope you learned something.